can see everything. Okay. Still recording, right? Yeah. Okay. So turn this on. See, that's part of the problem. That's why I turned it off the other day. So when this thing is filming, um, it's not sending. It's using the GPS or the camera <coughs> on the phone, and it's not using the GPS for on the. So I'm not getting the GPS coordinates. I'd have to stop filming. Um, I'll just see it again. Ah, oops. The filter's still on. Okay, I'll show you that, then I might stop that so you can get my GPS back on that camera. Okay. So, um... Okay. Let's see. Alright, so... We're lined on the moon now. Alright. We're gonna take this off. Now, technically, you don't need a dew shield, um, but it'll improve the contrast in the daytime. You'll, you'll get much nicer photos. The problem is, remember, every time you do a new go-to, you got to put the cap or the filter back on. So the dew shield's kind of a pain because you're going to have to be constantly taking it on and off every time you do a new go-to. I don't know if you can hear me. I said, um, remember, you have to put the filter or the cap back on the telescope before every new go-to. So if you put the dew shield on, that means you're going to have to be taking the dew shield on and off every single time you do a new go-to. Um, so if I'm looking at the moon and then I want to look at Jupiter, I have to remove the dew shield, put the cap back on or the filter, and then do the go-to and then replace the dew shield back on. So you're going to have to be taking the dew shield back on and off. So it's kind of a hassle, but it improves the contrast in the daytime, so you kind of want it. Still filming, right? Haven't hit your time limit? Here's the dish shield. Okay. So get this on. You have to be super, super, super careful um, not to bump it. I don't think there's any way to slide it on without messing up your line. So you gotta use the Velcro. That's good enough. Okay. Remember, the sun's coming into the telescope, you know, here on the side. So you want to block as much of that out as you can. It's not directly into the telescope, but it's still nasty with the photos. Let's see. Uh, okay, so it was on the sun. <laughs> the moon is not as bright as the sun, believe it or not. <laughs> not even close. You gotta put up the exposure a bit. Uh, can, whoa! See, a bird flew. <laughs> it's like the bird looks huge. It took up like the whole screen. <laughs> okay. Alright, so let's center it a little bit. Yeah. Um, I'm going to turn the grid off because that gets distracting. If you're not doing the alignments. Okay, grid off. Okay, Let's see the moon. Alright. It should technically still be in focus. Something else I forgot to do is um, when you do your initial focus 
as the telescope heats up, the focus point's gonna change. So typically, you do your initial focus, and then 15, 30 minutes, you're gonna have to refocus it again. I forgot to do that. Um, I can try to focus on the moon, or check the focus on the moon. But it's easier if you go back to the sun. It's easier if you go back to the sun and then focus on the sun. Yeah, it's really tough to tell. I think it's overexposed. Still recording. Yeah. Making a bit darker. One two fifty. One two fifty in a second. Can you kind of see some lunar features, just barely? I think it's in focus though. We don't really want to fiddle with it. Once it's out of focus, it's hard to get back in focus. Yeah, it's hard to tell. I can see some lunar features though, so I'm assuming it's in focus. And the moon, um, same problem. Remember, um, Yeah, so we're about, because um, the total solar eclipse, we're about one lunar month away from this total solar eclipse. So by definition, the total solar eclipse is when the moon is close to uh, perigee, when it appears larger than normal. So it blocks out the sun. So if we're one lunar month away from perigee, it should also be close to perigee right now, which is why, even here, it looks bigger than the sun. When I was looking at the sun earlier. Yeah, I'm silly. But you can't fit it, either way, you can't fit it into the field of view. So for the lunar occultation now, I was hoping to get the close-up view. Get some more photos here. What I'm going to do is take a series of photos. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop this so I can get my GPS coordinates back. Um, or geo tag the photos. I was just saying, what I do is I take a series of photos using different exposures um, to get a dynamic range. Get the, you know, where I can look at it on the computer and figure out what works best for next time. Okay, I'm going to turn this off. And you've got everything, so. Do shields on. Just remember, if you want to go look at Jupiter next, um, you got to take the dew shield off, put the solar filter back on, or the lens cap. Remember, you got to cap both. You got to put the cap on the finder scope, which I should do now since I'm not using the finder scope, and the cap on the telescope before you do the go-to because you never know if it's going to accidentally slew past the sun. Put the caps in the cases because they're easy to lose. So yeah, it's a good habit, either daytime or nighttime, when you're not using the finder scope, put the caps on. At night, it'll get dew on it, and day or night, it can just get dust on it. Um, so you know, if you're not using it, cap it. That's one last thing to remember. So before you do the next go to, just take the dew shield off. Put the cap back on or the solar filter back on. Yeah, super, super important. All right, I'm gonna get some, turn this off, get some photos.